to another episode of HBO Max. Um, I'm, <laughs> I forgot where I was going halfway through that. Um, I'm your host, McKenna, and joining me as always is Brandon. Hi, Brandon. How are you today? Oh, I'm just fine. That's good. I like your sweatshirt. Oh, thank you. Kirkland Signature. You know, uh, big, big fan of the, uh, of the Kirkland brand. So I gotta, gotta represent. Of course. Do you think we'll be, we could be sponsored by Kirkland someday? Or Costco in Kirkland? I don't think they do sponsorships. I've never seen them sponsor anybody, but I would love to be sponsored by uh, (gasps) by Kirkland. We're trendsetters. (laughs) I can see it now. Oh, my God. Can we? Okay, hear me out. Okay? Okay. Okay. We go to Costco. Mm -hmm. And we we get the food. We get the snacks. We get the the hot dog. Dollar fifty hot dog. And then we go around and we do a a sample tour. We eat all the samples, and then we talk. I don't know. This I need to flesh it out a bit more. I like yeah. had half the idea developed in my head, but like not the other half. So like that would that would be. I mean, p- put this down. Uh, if you if you do this idea, I'm gonna sue you. But that's a good <laughs> idea for like a TikTok. Is just go to Costco and try all the samples. You could do like weekly. I don't yeah. know how how often do they change. Do they change samples? I think daily I think they do it like I, weekly. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I believe I don't. I believe like if you go on like weekdays and stuff, normally like, they don't have like the samples out. Like, I think mm. it's a weekend thing. Huh? Oh, that makes sense. <sighs> Did you know? I don't know. Sam's Club. Do you have Sam's Club? Not near me, but we you know we got a Sam's Club out okay. here. That they do they do the samples as well. Not I I I discovered not as much as Costco, but they have some samples. I had what did I eat? Oh, I had tangerine slices. Ooh. But my hands were sticky then. They uh, there was no my hands. I were don't sticky. need to sample a tangerine. I know what a tangerine is like. I just I know, know what they're about. I like I like tangerine. One time, my grandma my grandma had a, a bowl of um they were tangerine uh, tangerine the clementines like the the tiny ones. Okay. My dad and I ate her whole bowl of them. Oh yeah, there was like Those are good. over ten of them. You, they they just they pop them in. They go down real easy. They peel real nice too. Mm-hmm. You. All of them. Eat a bag. That's just, that's that's an afternoon snack right there. Eat a bag. That's the uh, that's the tagline for the brand. <laughs> yeah. Cuties. Eat a bag. It's... I just feel like a, a monster when I I'm gonna I'm keep I'm gonna keep going on this thing. Okay. Um, I always feel like a monster when I open that bag because I never use scissors to open it. I just it's because it's like netting rip or it. whatever. I just rip it and like I feel yeah. so strong when I do. It's... <laughs> <laughs> and then it's. Cuties, it's a great tire. Halo, yeah. Cuties are the clementine. I don't know, the small ones. I really don't know the like, tangerines or like I don't yeah. know the difference. Orange, small oranges. Tiny oranges. Tiny oranges. They're so cute. Which I get why they're called cuties, but they're so tiny. Like, is there another food that has miniature versions of itself? That are as prolific as like tangerines and clementines and whatnot. That's a good question. Um, well, like so, Reese's peanut butter cups, right? You get oh, the ones yes. that are like the little, mm-hmm. yeah, those for sure. Um, jawbreakers. Oh. Right, you get the, like the there's you get the big like like, like the Disneyland mm-hmm. ones, and then you, and then you like you get the like the whole bag, just like the tiny little jawbreakers. The tiny jawbreakers. Um. But not in the candy department. I can't really think of one. Um, broccolini, right? Baby carrots. <gasps> baby carrots. Broccoli. Yeah. <gasps> I forgot about baby carrots. You you a fan of the baby carrot? Oh, I love baby carrots, yeah. yeah. Baby, baby carrots are better than just like a carrot. Oh, yeah. I feel so like I'm a rabbit when I eat the carrot. big ones. I feel like yeah, that's funny. ridiculous. Yeah. Why are they so big like that? Just That's too much. Nobody wants that much carrot. No, no, no. Too much carrot. It starts... Like, you can only eat so much before it's, like... It tastes like carrot. Like, you know how, like, when you eat too much of a thing and it starts to ta- Like, I don't know that, like... I don't know. It starts tasting weird. That's how I am with, like, cashews. Like, I could eat cashews for days. But, like, once I hit that mm. one cashew that tastes too much like cashew, I'm done. That's it. Interesting. 
Yeah. It's, one time, did I ever tell you my baby carrot story? <laughs> About. <laughs> Possibly. I don't know. You have so many stories. <laughs> one time, it was, it was one of my first times home alone at night. It was like 10 o'clock. And I was like, oh, I'm a little hungry. Oh, I'm home alone. I can just go downstairs and eat something. I won't scare anyone. So I go downstairs. I go and eat some carrots. I got like a ranch cup. And I'm sitting there in the kitchen eating, eating these carrots. And then I start thinking about what if there's someone looking in at me on the other side of the door? It's night out. I can't see outside. What if there's someone looking through the windows? So then I got scared, and I put all the ranch left in that ranch cup on the carrot, ate it, and then um, ran upstairs and stayed there for the rest of my night until my parents came home. <laughs> I scared myself. <laughs> and I was jumpy. I've never eaten food by myself downstairs ever again. Really? I don't like looking out the windows at night. It scares me too much. <laughs> no, I'm not about it. One of these times, someone's going to be out there, and I'm like, nope. But that, I don't know what I'm going to do. Cry, probably. One time, I'll get to the facts. I'll get to what we're reviewing in a second. One yeah, time, the episode has not started. No, it hasn't. We did the intro, and that's it. Yeah, I'm just thinking about Costco foods. One time, I don't know why I'm going to tell this story. One time, my sister and I, we were in the basement. It's when we were in the basement phase, and... I was, we were playing with Legos. Power goes out. It's nighttime. Pitch black. Dark as I've ever seen it. Screams bloody murder. Thought I was going to die. Because that, we were in we're in a murder shows. And I'm like, oh my god, someone cut the power. Even though the, I can see the where the breaker is. No, not in the, then. It was too dark out. I could see where the breaker was. Pitch black. Terrifying. Never again. Never. I hated going in the basement at night after that. I'm like, what if? Never. No. Not about the dark. Things are in the dark. I don't. Mess, I don't mess with the dark. I don't. I don't like being oh. in the dark. But I don't have a particular story about like a place got ruined for me because of the dark. <laughs> Outside in the dark. No, not about it. It's nightlight. Nightlight is this the thing to have. Yeah. Night. Okay. So <laughs> we. It, it's Star Trek month. Um, it is. And continuing with with our month, um, we did Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. It's very exciting. I like they do Roman numerals. I'm a big fan mm. of Roman numerals. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Big fan. Um, so facts and figures before we get into it. It was released June first, nineteen eighty four. Big year. Um, the Macintosh came out that year. Um, it competed in theaters with Temple of Doom, Gremlins, Top Secret, and Ghostbusters. Big summer. Big summer for, for blockbusters. Um, had a budget of $16 million. Box office of $87 million. Um, Leonard Nimoy, who of course plays Spock, directed the movie. And this is the first time Star Trek cast member has directed one of the movies. Um, it was the most, or, no, excuse me, words. The most difficult scene, he said, to direct was when Spock was unconscious in the sick bay with bones because he had his eyes closed, so he couldn't see what was going down. And, mm. um, he always thought that, um, uh, DeForest Kelly was annoyed with him because, like, and you could see it, I noticed this when, when I was watching it last night, you could see his eyelids, fl uh, Spock's eyelids flicker, and DeForest Kelly thought, like, S Nimoy was trying to direct him with his eyelids, like, flutter and everything. Um, and, ooh, do you know how many actors contributed to Spock in this movie? How many actors played or contributed to the character of Spock in this movie? So... Five? Close. Seven. Seven Spocks. Wow. So there was, of course, Nimoy. Carl Steven, who played nine-year-old Spock. Um, Vidya Potenza played 13-year-old Spock. Steven 
Manley played 17 year old Spock. Joe W. Davis, 25 year old Spock. Frank Welker, who has done a bunch of stuff, um, he does Spock screams. And, um, oh, I can't read my writing. Stephen Bullock, maybe? Frank, Frank Welker, um, if you didn't know, was, um, what, Shaggy forever? Fred Jones. Or, um, yeah, Fred. J- Fred. He was Fred. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, in like like everything mm-hmm. for like like decades oh yeah it like was pro- I, prolific prolific i um was scrolling he was he was also uh like nibbler on futurama uh he was garfield <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he's been in everything essentially yeah pr- prolific legendary voice actor mm-hmm. Leg- legend um the green light for um, Harv Bennett to write this movie um, was the day after Wrath of Khan opened. So in, I think he said this was like the quickest something he's done has ever been greenlit. Um, and he worked backwards from the ending to... Uh, that's just how he wrote the script. He, just worked, he knew what the ending was going to be. They had to figure out how to get there. Um... The leak precautions for this, because Spock's death in Wrath of Khan was leaked, so there was a lot more security around this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, they built the sets out of sequence. They referred to it as uh, Trois, which is uh, French for three. Um, Leonard Nimoy was not on the call sheet. Um, anytime Spock was referred to, or like any like lines that Spock had in the script, um, it said... Uh, Naklov, which is Vulcan backwards, um, and this was directing the movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, who cares if his name's not on the call sheet? He's directing the movie. It was... You really think you're fooling people with that one, guys? <laughs> um, the scripts were chemically uh, treated so copies could be tracked, and there were subtle word changes, so people knew if it got leaked. Um, the, descri- the destruction of Enterprise, it still got leaked. Like, people still found out about that. Yeah. But, um, there was... It's like uh, Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan sends out his scripts on uh, red paper, because oh. you can't you can't copy red paper. It comes That's out all weird. Wild. Yeah. Yeah, that leak precautions insane insane that's a lot of stuff to do for like i think with avengers like the last avengers people only got like a page at a time or something like that like it was people, very yeah like people were getting like the pages that they're yeah were, they didn't get like full scripts and mm-hmm. yeah yeah um and then my final fact and figure oh okay so okay let me explain this before i say it so I forgot to do the time to search for Spock. Okay. So I, and while I was doing the facts and figures, I like to scroll to the bottom and see what the last fact and figure is. And sometimes it's just completely insane and I don't know what it means. And this is what this one is. <laughs> um, so okay. I, I've decided that if there's an insane not does it make sense fact and figure at the very end i'm gonna i'm gonna say it um so this one is italian censorship visa number 80312 delivered on december 21st 1984 and that is the final fact and figure <laughs> okay 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 repeat that back to me uh, italian censorship uh visa number <laughs> 80312 uh, delivered on December 21st, 1984. It does. It pulls. It. Search for Spock is one of the first things that comes up. <laughs> um. Huh. It looks like. It, 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 Italian movies got censored a lot. Oh. Interesting. So, like. Oh, so Visa, so it had to be like, um, oh, so the the Italian censorship Visa was delivered on December 1st, uh, December 21st, 1984. So they like sent it over to Italy to be like, you know, like, 
like rated or whatever. And oh. then they were all like, okay. And then they let it air in <laughs> Italy. That's wow. that's a totally useless thing to put on the IMDb page. That's not going to help anybody. Nobody needs to know that. Now, we all know it. And everyone listening knows it. There you go. It's a fun fact for the day, you know? I mean, all of these were fun facts, to be fair. But, like, that one in particular, who boy. Yeah. Wait until that one's fun. on Jeopardy. <laughs> Italian censorship category. Um... Yes, that concludes facts and figure time for this excellent for Spock. It was very fun. I got sucked into once again got sucked into Wikipedia pages. Couldn't stop. Hashtag can't stop won't stop. Um, <laughs> um, no, it was I. I enjoyed reading it. Like um, Michelle Nichols, she had she had a skirt specifically made for her. Like n- everyone else wears pants but like she wanted a skirt so they made her a skirt which i think is great you know shout, very cool shout to her skirt yeah no it was great i loved reading these facts figured in the wikipedia pages fun time go read wikipedia pages <laughs> go do it um so what is your history with this movie we learned about your star trek history but do you have a particular yeah. history with this movie this movie's interesting because uh, I mentioned it a little bit last week, but there's the even and odd Star Trek rule, mm-hmm. right? So the even movies, good, odd movies, bad. And uh, this one is interesting because it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. And I remember watching it and being like, you know, I think I really like this movie. Um, I kind of watched it just like out of the blue or whatever. It's, I think... The thing with this movie is it's when you watch it, when you watch two, three, and four all together, this one really stands out because two is, you know, probably the best Star Trek movie ever made. It's super awesome. There's this movie, which is pretty good. And then there's four, which is like the most successful Star Trek film of all time. So it's like, it's like a pretty good movie sandwiched in between the two best movies in this, in, you know, the entire franchise, which makes it a little, you know... It's kind of disappointing in in that regard. Uh, I still remember, I, I I generally consider this movie to be a bit underrated. Uh, I think it's pretty good. There's some... And unfortunately, the weakness is in Leonard Nimoy's directing. Uh, this is his first time directing anything. He misses the mark on some stuff. There's some... Like, the, the them blowing up the Enterprise... That's kind of kind of doesn't mean anything. It's just there at the end to you know. Ah, uh, I I remember um, because the Enterprise isn't in you know the next movie because it gets blown up in this one. <laughs> I had seen I had seen Star Trek four before I saw Star Trek three, and I remember being like, "Why? Where's the Enterprise? <laughs> What's going on?" And so yeah, watching this for the first time, I finally got my answer. Um, I think Christopher Lloyd's really good in this movie. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's excellent. Um, but, uh, yeah, I remember this being, like, I remember a lot of people would, like, really kind of shit on this movie because, you know, the whole even on Star Trek thing. But then um, eventually I watched it and I was like, you know what? I think it's pretty good. I think it's generally, I guess, it's generally a bit underrated amongst uh, people. But, you know, it's not, it's not great. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Uh, that's I like fun star space times, um, you know uh, spaces. Um, I also one I liked because I don't know Star Trek. I liked how it was. Oh, we're gonna learn more about Vulcans, and also the Klingons are here, baby, and um, and just expanding on those species and everything. Um, yeah, there's a lot more lore in this one. Yeah, yeah, like, there is. Like, uh, like two really just focused on like that one episode of the series. Mm-hmm. This one focused a lot more, you know, uh, like they invented the Klingon language for this movie. Mm-hmm. There were, there were, like they had used some stuff in the original series and in um, the first Star Trek movie where the Klingons showed up. And they basically took that and expanded it out into a full language so that they could do 
everything for this movie, which is, yeah, it's like the, um, I believe it's like the most learned created language in the world is Klingon, which is pretty dope. Um, yeah, you, you get to hang out with some some Vulcans more. The um, the original version of this movie, like the original script that they were going to do was a lot different. Mm. Like it was supposed to be instead of Klingons, it was going to be Romulans. Oh, which Romulans, McKenna. Romulans are a uh, splinter race that broke off from the Vulcans a really long time ago. Oh. And the opposite of the Vulcan. So instead of suppressing all their emotions, they like embrace all their emotions. So it's it's like it's all the intelligence and like the strength of a Vulcan, but in like a um, you know a really like uh, kind of like chaotic person. Mm-hmm. And so they were in like the in some of the original series, and then like later Star Trek series, like the Vulc- uh, the uh, the Romulans, like the number one bad guy. Um. But then, yeah, they did. Uh, they you get a lot of Klingon stuff in this. The the first appearance of my favorite Star Trek ship, the Bird of Prey, is in this movie. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah, the Bird of Prey is awesome. But that's also like evidence of that it was supposed to be because, like, in the original series, the only people who could cloak their ships were Romulans. Oh. And so they had to invent a new Klingon ship that could do cloaking for this movie. Um, and it's awesome. The the Bird of Prey is so dope. Um, yeah, oh, the, the, I, in, hmm, in Excelsior, no, it was the, wait, no, it's the Enterprise, I enjoyed, let me tell you what I had to go back and rewatch a few times. Okay. Was when they were like, oh, it's red alert, and then, oh, the lights turned red, that was awesome, it was like, oh, shit, it's going down, that was fantastic i enjoyed that thoroughly um i also enjoyed everyone's fashion um and their civilian clothes they'd be they'd be real snazzy out there i love that a lot it showed a lot yeah of personality. I, th- I think that's really good this was sort of the first uh star trek movie or like star trek anything that like showed life like not on a starship or like not in like directly with you know starfleet and starfleet stuff mm-hmm. so like when they like they go to the bar and the in the it, before when they're going to steal the enterprise and stuff like that it's like the first time you get to see just like people just civilian clothes all that stuff what thing what things look like in the future it's pretty cool people being people yeah it was I, I it's colorful i like the colors everyone just be out there in the colors it was a great time i i liked um kirk in particular he had a, he had a very snazzy outfit it was yeah it was all cool um when do you want me to ask you questions <laughs> uh let me read a very quick uh summary okay. of what ha- yes. you know a little, little plot description oh, yes. of the film and then That's yeah we'll uh, do uh <laughs> let's see okay in the wake of Spock's ultimate deed is a deed of sacrifice, Admiral Kirk and the Enterprise crew return to Earth for some essential repairs to their ship. When they arrive at Space Dock, they are shocked to discover that the Enterprise is being decommissioned. Even worse, Dr. McCoy begins acting strangely and Scotty has been reassigned to another ship. Kirk is forced to steal back the Enterprise and head across space to the Genesis planet to save Spock and bring him back to Vulcan. Unbeknownst to them, the Klingons are planning to steal the secrets of the Genesis device for their own deadly purpose. Dun dun dun. <coughs> pretty um, cool movie. Pretty cool idea for a movie. Like doing, mm-hmm. they come up with a pretty like. I mean, obviously, you know, they, they sort of set up the way that they're going to bring Spock back. You know, in the first movie, but mm-hmm. uh, but you know, the uh, the um, the memories being implanted in McCoy's brain Mm -hmm. which you see you see in wrath of Khan, but you don't really think much of it Mm -hmm. that comes back that's dope that's dope i i did enjoy i i liked in the beginning where they sort of did like the recap thing and then they like it went from like the purplish and then it went into like the colors or whatever not to be like back to like oh shit it's the start of the movie now um 
I also cried during that part. Like, it was, they made it, like, really emo- like more emotional. I don't know. It was, I, yeah, I cried in the beginning. Um, so. Okay, here are my questions. Okay, questions. Now, okay, I'm gonna preface this. I'm really dumb, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I did not... I'm sure I did not pick on things, pick up on things. So, um, excuse the questions if they are truly stupid. Okay. So with that said, um, okay. Why do the Klingons care so much about Genesis and why do they want the secrets of Genesis so bad? They are a warrior race. Mm. That's like their deal. And Genesis is a weapon that can wipe out an entire planet. So pretty good they in part they fear that the um because you know they're at war with the federation they feel that the federation would use it against them because that's exactly what they would do is they would use it against the federation (laughs) so yeah um why uh why is genesis destroying itself like this is this is one of the dumber things in the movie it's 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 very like original series or like bad episodes of TNG. Um, David Marcus used something called proto matter when he was building the jet because he was working on Genesis. Genesis wasn't working. And so he used this thing called proto matter to like shortcut a lot of stuff mm. and make it work. But it's re- the proto matter is really unstable. So over time, Genesis is just like decaying and yeah, you're, like destroying itself. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Why? Huh. That's not good. So. (laughs) Oh, why? Why does everything speed up? Like, why does Spock's age speed up so much? Is it because he was, like, revived, quote unquote, on Janet? Like, why why is he being. Yeah, it's because he's one of the things being brought back to life from Genesis when it's redoing all that stuff. And I mm-hmm. think it has to do with the proto matter. It's like the life, the, like, the timeline of producing stuff isn't. Because I, I imagine what, like, the idea here is, right? Is we remember how we saw Genesis in the first movie where it was like, mm-hmm. boom, in like two minutes, six minutes or whatever, they create that entire, like, cave, mm-hmm. right? So I imagine like the idea was they built it to where it like it like ramps things up and like evolves things really really fast and then like stops. Mm-hmm. And I think in this movie what they're trying to do is that like the Genesis planet doesn't ever like stop evolving. It just keeps doing the rapid Genesis effect over and over and over again. Oh. oh. But that's me doing the a lot of the movie's work for it. <laughs> um science. Yeah. Um uh, I drew arrows. I don't know what they mean. Hold on. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> is... Okay. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Why <laughs> is the Enterprise being retired just because it's old? Like, it's 20 years old? Like, is that why it's being retired? Or, like, is there another phrase? Yeah, is so, um... Yeah, remember in, like, the last movie, like, they're putting this, like, whole brand new crew out on the mm-hmm. Enterprise a bunch of rookies and stuff. Like, it's no longer, like, an elite class ship. Mm-hmm. And it comes back, like, they they show up to Earth to refit and, like, repair the Enterprise because it's, like, totally fucked. Like, they, they it apparently took, like, they, they weren't able to, like, fix the warp drive properly. It took them, like, a month or something to get back from wherever they, like, teleported out to. Uh-oh. Um and so it's like, yeah, it's a super old ship and it's like totally messed up. It's better to just like junk it than to repair it. Hmm. So what? Oh, this is going to, this is going to be, so in the movie, like in the fourth, this next movie, are they going to be using Excelsior that like, what? Are, what's the next ship? Is it Excelsior? Am I? I don't know. No, no, oh. it's not. It's not okay. No, uh, they they spend they spend the next movie. They use the bird of prey pretty much the entire next movie. Oh, oh, they yeah. okay. <gasps> is because the next one isn't it like a voyage home or something or a way home or something? The voyage home. The voyage home. Okay, no, I shouldn't think about it. 
Okay, I'm not gonna ask you <laughs> questions about it. Um, I don't know what this arrow means. <laughs> okay, okay, I don't know. Um, bones. Bones. Does he have both Spock's memories and his own, or like whatever Spock, like the melding or whatever? He oh. has Spock's Katra inside of him, which is um, essentially Spock's soul, like the totality of his being, all the knowledge that he's gained, all of his memories throughout his lifetime, which when a before a Vulcan dies, what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to return to Vulcan and like place their Katra into like the essentially like one big vault of all the Vulcan souls, right? Oh. So that they because they're like an intellectual species, they're all about like science and learning new stuff. And so essentially they keep like a you know one big massive collection of the entire collected knowledge of the species. Oh. So can but, they does it can they like pick and hmm Say you want to learn something that someone knows. Are you able to pick and choose something from someone's contra? Or, like, do you have to take... I don't... You know, that's a good question. I'm not 100% sure. I don't think we've actually ever seen... Yeah, um... So I'm imagining I don't know. It. I'm imagining it like the Pensieve in Harry Potter, where, like, you can, like, pick certain thing, like, certain memories or whatnot, and be like, ooh, gonna look at that, and then put it back. I don't know. What are they... Um... <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. We don't know... You don't actually get like in 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 all of Star Trek. You don't get to spend very much time on Vulcan Ooh. hanging out with Vulcans, you know, because um, they're all they all take place, you know, out on a starship or whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, it looks like we have seen a couple times when, like in this movie, a Katra is placed into somebody else, mm -hmm. but we never actually see like what happens to it, you know, at the um. Yeah. You know? Oh. So. Uh. So Bones. Is he just. What. I, uh, like what. Hmm. How. What. What. Hmm. What's. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So Bones. <laughs> He's got. So, like, can he go back and forth? No. That's not, no. I don't know how to describe this. Like, because he's got Spock's contract, can he, like... Hmm. How... I don't know how to word it. So, he's got... His... Bits in memory. And his bits. And he's got Spock's yes. bits. It's, it's, it's more no. like he has like Spock's like his soul is, is a better right. way to think of it than it is actually like memories. Oh. It's like Spock is like inside of him. Oh. <sighs> That's why at the end of the movie he has to like he they have to like re mind meld with him so that Spock's soul can like go back into young Spock. And he, he's he's like, you know, oh. um, OK, so it says that in some Star Trek novels, this is not mm -hmm. official stuff here. But that um, in the the Hall of Ancient Thoughts, which is where like the uh, all the great Vulcans they put their um, their katras into, um, Vulcan scholars, philosophers, and mystics can petition and be permitted to meld with the katras for research and enlightenment. So, yeah, I imagine it's not like going and looking up a library book or whatever. <laughs> But it is like it's like a mind meld essentially, okay. which is um, you haven't got to see too much of. But it is like the way it works is like if a Vulcan wants to like share a memory with you or like you know do or like like you know show you, they 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 mind meld with you and then you just experience their memory oh. of it. 
Yeah. So, like, can you feel... Well, I guess I suppress their emotions. Never mind. Um, will... I guess you sort of answered this, too. Will Bones... I bones. Never mind. Yeah, bones. Oh, I... Wait, hold on. I'm gonna start, I don't know if we talked about this in the episode, but I asked my dad if my dad's got a friend named Bones. If he was... Right, right. He's not. He... Um, it's because he's very lanky. <laughs> and he's, like, 6'3". And, like, okay. very skinny, and that's why he's Bones. Not it's a good nickname. Stuff. Yeah, Bones is a cool nickname. Like, my dad didn't even know this dude's name until he friend requested my dad on Facebook. And my dad was like, I have no idea who that is. And then my uncle was like, yo, did Bones friend request you on Facebook? And my dad's like, I don't know. What's his name? He's like, it's Bob whatever his last name is. And it's like, oh, that makes sense. Do you have anybody who you only really know through a nickname? Like, you, you don't think of them as, like, their name very much? Like, hmm, that's a good question. I, I don't know. Come back to it. And, and like, not like, not like screen names, right? Because obviously right. we all have like, like, like Brett Jamerson guest on this podcast. I most of the time refer to him as Jim Tasty, his screen name. Right. A lot of people refer to me as Jose Ruffis, <laughs> even though my name's Brandon. Um, there was a guy I worked with. And I, this is the one I can think of all the top of my head. I feel like there are others that I could think of. There's a guy that I work with whose name was also Brandon. Oh. But I didn't even, like, know what his name was for a while. His nickname was Panda. Oh. That's and I'm not even, I don't even think I, at this point, I'm not even sure I even know why that was his nickname. <laughs> <laughs> I... But I, I ran into him, like, a month or so ago. And... I genuinely didn't even remember his like real name. <laughs> <laughs> That's how like um I mean, it's screen name thing sort of still, but I used to I used to have a nickname with my old my old friend group that was particular to my screen name. And only this friend group called me that. It was the friend group with my ex. So like I didn't really talk to them after he and I broke mm. up. And I was talking to one of my friends from that group and he called me by that nickname and I was like, who? Oh, that's me. That's, I forgot. I forgot for it. I was like, oh, he's talking to me. That's right. Um, but I don't, there was someone, one of my coworkers and he became my friend, um, in England, he went by a nickname derived from his last name, but that's all I can really think of. Oh, okay. so I got, I got another one of those, a nickname derives from the last name. Mm -hmm. So at work, one of the other jobs I used to work at, there we had like four different guys all in the same shift, all named Alex. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and so most of them were called by their last name, right? There was mm -hmm. like one guy who got to be Alex, and then the rest <laughs> of them were just like, you know, their last names. But there's one, one guy, um, Alex Babadia, and like... I totally forgot that his name was even Alex because everybody would call him Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, shoot. I'm going to be thinking about this now. I'm going to be thinking about this. I, I don't know because, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, a bunch of my dad's friends, I guess, because they, they all go by, for some reason, they all go by their last name. They're not all named the same, but they go by their last name. Mm. And I didn't realize they had first names until probably too old. Um, you know, most of my dad's friends call him by his nickname <laughs> that he's had since he was a kid, which is uh, Toad. Toad? <gasps> my dad goes by Goaf. <laughs> Goaf? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. No. Why, is, why Toad? I want to know the the history behind so it. so this is so so my dad had three brothers right mm -hmm. and i can't remember i can't remember what all the nicknames were but they like they they had like decided like okay we're gonna we're gonna have nicknames that are like toad oh. and like uh they were all like like amphibian creatures like that right <gasps> literally the the other two nicknames never stuck nobody's ever called him that like never used <laughs> but to this day pretty much all my dad's friends call him toad, toad. his brothers call his brothers Call him Toad. Like, not Robert. They call him Toad. 
oh my god i have one now now that you mentioned dad's brothers my dad one of my dad's brothers i'll i'll explain goff in a second but i gotta his legal name is roger but everyone calls him ralph because growing up um my i guess my grandfather worked with someone named ralph and for some reason he reminded him of my uncle roger and they all started calling him ralph like i didn't know that my uncle wasn't because my dad's brothers all have our names so i was like oh that's his name and then i i remember like as a kid like oh no his name's roger it's not it's but everyone calls him ralph except for my grandma that's she's like the only person that calls him roger and like other random people but like so go. So, sorry. So go your ahead. dad's name. Your dad's name is Rodney. Yes. The Rodman. The Rodman. And his brother's name is Roger. Mm-hmm. Also, could be called the Rodman. <laughs> yes, that is accurate. <laughs> um, yeah, th- those are the only two. <laughs> My dad. So, 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 so go. Go. Um, because I, I, because I, I always call your dad the Rodman. Of course. That's of a course. good nickname. <gasps> But his, I also he of goes by Goof. Uh, yes, he goes by Goof because when he was a baby, one of my dad's name was of six. One of his siblings said he looked like a gopher, and that that was it. That was it. There you go. <laughs> also, my dad's family always is like, "Oh, there's Goof or whatever." It's very rare for I hear when I hear someone call him one of those family members call him Rodney. Um. But in that same vein, I just remembered one of my friends, his nickname is Ducky. His real name is Alfred, I think? I don't even know his real name. I don't even know his real first name, but everyone calls him Ducky, because when he was a baby, someone in my dad thing, someone said he looked like a ducky, and then that stuck, and now, like, everyone, I just saw him last week, We everyone still calls him Ducky. That's, I... The, like I said, I, I don't know his real first well, There you go. And that's the nickname portion. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where, that's the part of the podcast where we talk about nicknames. <laughs> Come back next week. I'll probably think of more. Yeah, that, that's... Nickname, I'm going to keep going about nicknames. Um, That's... Nicknames... Because I grew up with... um, I love nicknames. I, like... My... I was... My, my name was always... N- I'm going to make it into a verb, nicknamed. Um, and, like, I remember, because I was into Minecraft, um, and I watched a lot on YouTube, like, everyone there had a nickname based on their screen name. And, like, that was always my dream. I always wanted a nickname based on my screen. And then I got it with that last friend group. It, it wasn't a good one. I'm going to tell you what. My nickname with that no. friend group was not good. No. I don't did I have I ever told you what that nickname was? No. It was Pooter. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah, no. So, um I'm very happy that we've circled back around to nicknames based on my name, my actual name. Um Mac's a pretty good nickname, you know? Yeah, I I enjoy Jenna, it. Hannah, Mac. Yeah. There you go. Mac May. Mac May. That's <laughs> um few people have called me Mackie. Campbell my sister calls me Mackie. Um, she has ever since like she called me McKenna recently and I was like, that's disgusting. <laughs> because it's like I never hear her say that. I'm like, stop it. Um Yeah, shout out to nicknames. Yeah, I love a good nickname. You gotta love a good nickname. You got a good nickname. Jose Ruckus is, is a really good nickname. It's not really a nickname, <laughs> Well, though. like, okay, another name. Another name, I guess. I don't know. Screen name. I do... Good screen name. I, I, I do love... I'll never forget when <laughs> when Tom Back <laughs> realized that your name was not Jose Ruckus. So many people so. have had that. Josh McCuga just found that yes. out. Like, when I, I had a meeting with Josh McCuga... <laughs> And I, I, I popped up, and in the Zoom, my name was Brandon. And he's like, wait, your name's not Jose Ruckus? I'm like, no, that's not a real name anybody has ever had. It's amazing. Amazing. I can't believe you never knew. Wow. That's, I mean, that sounds very Josh. I mean, you didn't know. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. And that, I think, now concludes our nickname portion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, you got bone con to the nicknames. It wasn't, no, never mind. Okay, my questions. <laughs> um, I think I have a couple more. How did we get to nicknames? Oh, Bones. Bones. But it comes back to Bones. Bones is such a good nickname. Okay, so, um, <laughs> before we go back down. Um, the best, you know what the best part about Bones' his nickname is? Hmm. Kirk is the only person who ever calls him Bones. Oh, wow. Everybody else calls him Dr. McCoy. <gasps> Kirk, and Kirk rarely ever calls him Dr. McCoy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's awesome. That, aw. That's such a cute connection. They got the bones. Do bones connect them? <laughs> Shout out to bones. Um. Bu -bu -bum. Okay. Does what? Okay. So the Enterprise Enterprise blows up. And before that, it was going to be um, retired. Does everyone just transfer to the next ship? Or, like, are they going to be assigned to different ships now? I don't know how this works. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just going to I'm just gonna pretend like we haven't seen the next movie yet. McKenna, they're going to be lucky if they have jobs coming. Oh, that is very <laughs> true. I didn't think about that. I forgot they stole. Yeah. Because, yeah, okay. Never, yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. So Scotty also sabotaged, like, the Excelsior. So that's, that's not great. <gasps> That's a crime. Oh my god. Is there a court system? Yeah. Oh. So, theoretically, theoretically, pretending, no. What would, like, they get life in, in prison for this? Or, like... No, uh, the Federation probably doesn't really have prison. Um, oh. I, 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 they probably, I mean, for like extreme cases and stuff, they probably have something, but like the, you know, the, Fe the Federation is like a super progressive futuristic society where everything is nice and clean and everybody's, you know, for the most part, extremely peaceful and stuff. So I, um, they would be, uh, definitely kicked out of Starfleet. Sent back home to Earth. Uh-oh. Spock, well, I mean, Spock didn't do anything, so Spock's good, I guess, but... <laughs> yeah, everybody else would, yeah, be, be in some serious trouble. Do we know where on Earth everyone is from? Um... So, most of them aren't exactly from, like, Kirk grew up in space. Oh. His, his dad was in Starfleet, and he's, um, uh, there's, there's actually some, like, good, interesting stuff about, like, um, Kirk's upbringing. Ooh. Scotty's from Scotland, Sc if you didn't know. <laughs> Uh, Chekhov is Russian. Um, I don't... Let's see. What do we know about Uhura? Uh, let's see. Um... <laughs> on the regular Wikipedia... Uh, okay, so... Yeah, not much information about, like, a backstory for her in the OG time. Let's check Memory Alpha. <laughs> check Memory Alpha. That's so science-y. It's so out of space. Mem memory Alpha, Alpha is the uh, the fan-held wiki, wiki page for Star Trek. That's it is name. very detailed. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Uhura was born in Kenya. Oh. Um, yeah. There you go. There we go. Fun. So. <sighs> Bones, of course. Bones was a doctor on Earth until he got divorced. And, uh, well, 
maybe uh, <laughs> there's actually there's there's a there's um a fun retcon about whether or not bones in the first episode uh whether or not he ended up divorcing his wife or not it's it is it is a bit of continuity that was never quite sorted out <laughs> um uh, but in the in the J.J. Abrams movies, that's what it is. Is he um, he joined Starfleet after his divorce? Because uh, I, b- I believe what he says in that movie is uh, she got the whole planet in the divorce. <laughs> so, can you how say you want to join Starfleet? You want to yep. go do the space thing? How h- how would you go about that? Like, ha- hmm. you you would enroll in the uh, Starfleet Academy. Oh, okay. So, would you is Starfleet Academy on Earth, or do you get to go up into space? Like, do you? Uh, be- because Starfleet is you know uh, the the branch of uh, like the military branch mm-hmm. of the Federation of Planets. Uh-huh. At a each planet has a Starfleet Academy for their students or whatever but i I do like we don't see much of starfleet academy right uh Mm -hmm. we do see like in you know various star treks we'll see uh ensigns which is like the lower uh enlisted uh people on the ship and they'll just be like from all over the place and they'll talk about like the different starfleet academies they went to uh in um the jj abrams series you see a little bit of them at starfleet academy and it's just it's like everybody. It's not not all humans. It's it's like all the aliens. Is it all the aliens? All the all of them. Every single one. Yep. Is it at the point at Star Trek is space easily accessible to humans? Like if say you do go Starfleet time like could you just like go to space whenever you like is that like a thing like could you just go yeah um you can you can hire like we see in this movie where bones tries to hire a passage on a ship to take him somewhere Mm. um you can get involved in stuff like your job might take you to different places and whatnot um so in og trek like I said, like they basically never went to Earth in OG Trek, right? It's mm-hmm. all their their five year voyage. Just go out into space and find some new shit. Um, in TNG, you see they focus a lot more on like what the actual society is like, and it's what in a sci fi or I guess even in like economic like philosophy, they're a post need society. So by the time we get to TNG, they have replicators and stuff, right? They can they they have a computer that can rearrange matter into anything they want. So they can just make food out of nothing, right? They can make water out of nothing. So economics wise, like this, and this is a dumb thing about Star Trek. Okay. We're, I'm not going to have an opportunity to talk about this anywhere else. So we might as well just talk about it here, um, which is like, so, so nobody needs jobs, right? Because you don't have to pay for food. You don't have to pay for water and stuff. Um, they, they, they literally like in, in TNG, like they say, like the, the Federation doesn't have a currency, like there's no money. Um, but occasionally, like they go to restaurants and stuff, and there are people being waiters. <laughs> and like, like when, like when questioned about, like, like okay, so like if you if you don't have a job, like what, like like Captain Picard, like why do you work? Like why do you guys? Why is there, they, they, they we work to better ourselves? Like we work for you know the exploration. We work to better society. We work to better ourselves. And it's like okay, so is that guy just really <laughs> passionate about? waitering like being a being a waiter like that's that was his dream because nobody dreams of being a waiter (laughs) (coughs) if okay okay put yourself it's hypothetical time yep put yourself in this say it's it's star trek you're you're star trek in the starfleet and the waiters Mm -hmm. born to serve they're all out there. What you had to have a career. Say you had to have a career. What's your career? Um that's interesting. Cause part of me would say, like, oh, I would just join Starfleet and go out and 
but it's hard to because like i don't know because i, I as, as previously discussed uh scare, space travel seems mm-hmm. scary to me so space yeah space big scary uh the ships do like seems like like you know their spaceship technology is way better than our spaceship technology <laughs> so maybe it's maybe it's not as scary being on a spaceship um but like i mean i i, I would like uh I like writing. Maybe try to be a writer. Maybe mm-hmm. try to. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, pretty much, you know, same stuff I'm doing. They got sports in the future, probably, right? <laughs> I would. Just, I can talk about sports in the future. Uh, future sports. Future yeah. space sports. Oh, interesting. What would what what would you be doing, McKenna, in the future? You would be in Starfleet. I would love to be in Starfleet, dude. I won't go to space. Like I don't. I. I could be an intern. Um, I could be like a janitor. Like I don't. Mind. I just want to go into space and do the things and like maybe brush elbows with people, important people. I feel. I mean, you could probably be like a communications officer. Like that seems to be like I can kind of what you do anyway. Actually, <laughs> I my first year as a college, I, I was a communications major. So like. I'm happy. But I mean, like, wait, like, what Uhura's job is. Yeah. Like, when they get a hailing frequency and she puts it up on the big screen. Like, that's, <gasps> I could do that, that is essentially what you do. I could absolutely do that. Yes. Put me in. I'm in. Starfleet time. Give me the shirt. That's, I, I, I will do anything for a shirt. Okay. I want that on the record. <laughs> I will figure out how to be in Starfleet for the shirt. Um, I could probably be. I feel like I could. I I could be a starship captain. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Yeah, you got the leadership skills. Hell yeah, do it. Do yeah. the captaining. Yeah, I will do it. I'll enroll in Starfleet Academy <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's what we're gonna. It's we're gonna title this. We enrolled a Starfleet Academy. That's, it's not even the movie review anymore. It is Starfleet Academy enrollment time. Do you think? There will ever actually be something, not exactly like Starfleet and everything, but like big spaceship that like once we get to that point of space exploration, like do you th- do you think we'll ever get to that point where there's like a big spaceship? Like not in our time, I'm sure, but like big spaceship, um, people go up, they do captainy things, go explore planets. <sighs> So this it's hard to say um, because of like the like it would depend on like a lot of different factors essentially like uh, like obviously we would want to eventually like if we had the capabilities explore beyond our solar system mm-hmm. but like it's not exactly practical in any way that we can envision now to just like throw a hundred people on a ship and just leave the solar system. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, I would imagine it's like in the expanse, right? Uh, The first uh, interstellar ship that they build in that series, like it it gets built in in between like the first two books is um, because they have, really really fast space travel in that but they don't they've never left the solar system because leaving the solar system is really really difficult like you, you, there's a lot of problems to solve right you need an engine big enough that can thrust far enough to carry a bunch of stuff but also like won't overheat and won't it's it's a whole it's it's a lot there's a lot more problems than you assume about like why we can't travel through space really fast um gravity is a big part of it you know um Pesky gravity but the reason that they end up um, building a um, a colony ship, like a, a ship that could fit an entire civilization on it and leave the solar system, is that the Mormons build it because the uh, Earth has extremely strict um, uh, laws about how many kids you can have and like registered births mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So that kind of, you know, the way the Mormons operate and stuff, that's not their bag. So they they essentially pool all their money and build this giant galaxy ship just to go off and be Mormons <laughs> <laughs> in hopes that eventually they will find like they can have an entire civilization on that ship living for 
you know, the hundreds and hundreds of years it will take to potentially reach a planet that's even close to inhabitable. Wow. Do you think in our time they'll find another habitable planet? Like, what do you mean find? Like... Like... Do... Because, like, in, in general, like, through, you know, like, the, the super deep, like, scanning and stuff that they do, like, they do, in theory, think that there are some, like, mm -hmm. other planets that could potentially be livable. It's hard to, like, tell. But, you know. Like... Ooh, wait, no. Here's a different question, actually. Forget okay. I asked that one. Do you think... <laughs> In our time, we'll find another species. Like, aliens. Probably not. Oh, damn. Are you familiar with the Fermi paradox, McKenna? No, I'm not. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, let, me, let me get it, because I, I need all the different explanations. Ooh, I'm, I'm excited. I love a good paradox. So, uh, the the Fermi paradox seeks to ask the question about like, okay, so the, the universe, as we understand it, right, expands infinitely. Mm -hmm. There's countless solar systems with countless oh. planets. So generally speaking, the idea is, is that if the universe is that big and that infinite, there has to be some other life form out there, right? Mm -hmm. And given what we know about when humans showed up during, you know, the evo like the expansion of the solar system we're pretty new compared to everything else going around right right so if there are other civilizations there's a fair likelihood that they got started before us so the question is like why haven't we already been contacted by aliens and so um what's this guy's name uh enrico fermi who was a um a nobel prize winning physicist came up with an explanation that's called the Fermi paradox. So, um, why, uh, so these are the explanations possible for why we haven't been contacted by aliens. So, uh, one, aliens never came here because of a physical difficulty uh, that makes you know space transfer, uh, space travels infeasible across those great distances, things like that, um, or it's something related to like biology or you know. Any, any reason. Space travel, you just can't do it. You can't travel extremely long distances. Not feasible. Um, two, aliens simply just never decided to visit us. <laughs> they are... And uh, so, for a couple reasons. Like, one, like we talked about last week, like, there's the um, the prime in, uh, in, in, in Star Trek. Um, you're not allowed to contract civilizations that aren't technologically... Mm -hmm. Um, equivalent to you essentially for a lot of reasons so mm -hmm. either one they're scared of showing up and talking to us because like like we know like you interact with different like like anytime like a species like a, a race of humans has showed up on a new continent it's fucked some shit up for <laughs> one of the sides right it's not a good idea mm -hmm. so they just chose not to to hang out with us um Advanced civilizations beyond Earth arose too recently for aliens to reach us, so they're much sim more similar to us technologically. They're just we we it's not going to happen. Um, aliens have visited Earth in the past, but we have not observed them. Um, and then there, people have come up with various other explanations for like reasons about why it's unlikely we'll ever actually come into contact with aliens, right? One is, I don't know if you ever, did you read Ender's Game in school? No. Okay, well, spoilers for Ender's Game. Oh, um, uh, the aliens in Ender's Game accidentally, like, killed a bunch of us because they didn't realize that we were intelligent. Oh. They're, they were, like, so far beyond us intellectually that they we were, like, like, dogs essentially like they didn't like they thought that they just stumbled upon a planet that was just like yeah there's and there's just like a bunch of like animals down there it's no like intelligent life so there's that idea too right is that like they can't even recognize that we're here um oh my god yeah there's a lot of different like there's this thing called the drake equation 
which is very similar, like in related to um, the Fermi paradox, which is essentially this guy created this equation, which is like, um, so it's n times, you know, R, F, P, N, E, all this stuff. It's all these different variables and stuff. And it's trying to determine the number of technologically advanced civilizations in the Milky Way. And so it's things like the rate of formations of stars in the galaxy times the uh, fraction of those stars with planetary systems times the number of planets per solar system with an environment suited enough for or organic life times the function of those suitable planets upon which organic life would actually appear times the fraction of those habitable planets where intellectual life would actually appear times the fraction of civilizations <laughs> that would reach the technological level just to be able to send signals that we could detect time the length of time that those civilizations would be sending out signals and how long we have been alive to possibly being able to detect those signals. And you can have a lot of fun. Like there's some, I think they're like Drake equation websites where you can go in and like input like different things. And that'll determine like the, just the likelihood that there are actually aliens in the Milky Way. Oh my God. Yeah. That hurt my brain. <laughs> so 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 all that to say generally no i don't believe that we'll ever like contact aliens tldr no <laughs> oh says it like um in ernest klein's book armada he talks about like oh humans and then it's alien time and they gotta like stop it's a class thing. You gotta stop aliens from blowing up the earth. Da, da, da. It's now like been on like a whole alien kick the last couple of years and like mm. near me out. They're somewhere. It's not. Oh here. yeah, there's almost definitely aliens out there. Like, do you think at a different planet in far away universe, in a galaxy far, far away, there are two of us also doing an HBO Max in their planet? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess I don't know. Like I guess there, it's there are universe type of thing, but that yeah, that's more parallel universes. Which I don't, I don't even, I don't even know how to start getting into that stuff. I don't know anything <laughs> about that. Um, but like alien wise, like there's a lot of questions about that, right? Because like, are like, is like entertainment and like storytelling is that a human specific thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <gasps> Because, because, like, depending on, like, how you think about, like, life evolving, like, things like hive minds, right? Like, uh, collective, shared, more like what ants have, right? Mm. Part of the reason humans tell stories was that it was an extremely convenient way to pass information to other people, and especially, like, generations down. You tell them a story which has a lesson, and they learn the lesson. And they know, don't go off into the woods where there's, like, fucking tigers and shit or whatever. <laughs> um so like like story storytelling is actually like part of human evolution. It's one of the things that's got us further along than you know. Um so like species like bees or ants, which communicate much more like direct to each other with other things. Like so like if you made them more intelligent, I don't think that they would start telling stories because they communicate more with like pheromones or they communicate with like other different things. Storytelling is not like valuable to that species. Oh, uh, uh, insane! Like this is the type of shit that keeps me up at night, thinking yeah. about how infinite the universe is, and like other people, like other uh, more aliens and planets, and like I. Uh, <laughs> I have almost weekly existential crises about about this. Like thinking about aliens, aliens in the infiniteness of the universe. Infiniteness? Yeah, sure. Infiniteness of the universe. Hmm. Space, space in general. Space. The final frontier. The final frontier. <laughs> space is big. I hate it, but I love it. And we're gonna go do a podcast in space one day. Um. <laughs> I've never been particularly bothered by the size of the universe. Because right? there were those pictures that were coming out, right? Oh, we have the, the, that new telescope that's super good. And people mm -hmm. were like zooming super far out and being like, 
oh, we're so small. Ah, oh, it's terrible. It's like, I don't know. Like, what is what is the size of how we are in the universe? Have any effect on you whatsoever? I don't know that. And like, and I, I say this as a, as a person who is like regularly racked with extreme existential crises and stuff. This is just not one that's ever made sense to me. Like, I don't give a shit how big the universe is. <laughs> I'm 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 much more concerned like with like the vastness of the universe. Mm -hmm. Fuck it, I don't care. I'm much much more concerned about the uh, extreme small amount of time we get to hang around it. Oh god, that too. Oh my god. Like the thing that messes me up every time I think about it is the thing of like we're as close to Cleop or no, we're closer to Cleopatra than Cleopatra was to like when the the pyramids were built. That messes mm -hmm. me up because like I don't have a concept. Well, that's more of just like schools being bad at teaching you when things happen, right? Like our our understanding of like who Cleopatra was just isn't actually that good oh, yeah. for what we teach kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> I hate time. I hate time so freaking much like i don't have a good concept of it either because it's like i don't know i've never been able to wrap my head around certain things like how in like 1923 and like thinking to i don't know it hurts my little tiny brain yeah. it, it's it's kind of like how people like don't realize that like picasso was kicking around and like this like he lived until like the sixties, something like that. Like, yeah, that's like I think about like I'll look up somebody famous who I think like died in the early twentieth century. It's like, oh no, yeah, Picasso died in nineteen seventy three. My parents were like, like my parents were a lot like I because you you hear the stories of like Picasso right when you're in mm -hmm. school and they're talking about it. And he's like, oh, and his paintings were worth so much more after he died, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. he was so unknown and stuff. And you're like. <laughs> like, like he was like, like as far as like the Cubists go, he was one of the last of them. I know. Like he what? wasn't doing this stuff at the beginning. What's well, like even the um, I think her name is like Dame Judith Anderson in this in Search for Spock. She was born in eighteen ninety seven. Like she died in like ninety six or something. Oh but it's God. like she was born in the nineteenth century. Like. What? Well, that's what uh this is a thing i i got from john green i can't remember where he wrote about this or like talked about it. probably in, like a vlog, vlog brothers video or something but so like the average human lifespan like over the last like 100 and something years right like the average human lives about like 75 years or something that's like the average um so the length of the united states like the entire history of the united states is about three human lifetimes long. Stop. <laughs> oh no. That's... Three full people experienced the entirety of the United States. Uh, uh, no. Oh my god. I think we're getting closer to four now, but <laughs> great. <laughs> like even when I was over in England and I saw things built before 1776, it's like a McDonald's now or whatever. And I'm like, that, that, mm. our, the nation was not even a twinkle in Franklin's eye or whatever. Like, Franklin wasn't even born yet. Like, <sighs> the earth is, yeah. uh, <laughs> pretty old it's old but like it's pretty old I, like i i i know what evolution is i know what it is <laughs> but the time that it takes to evolve stuff like i can't i can't wrap my brain around like oh it's gonna take millions and millions of years for like what this like this tiny little thing to like evolve into whatever like how we evolved from like monkeys and shit like ah. so i i've told you this this joke before but i'm just gonna <laughs> reference it anyway because it's it's really it 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 like so there's there's an old cracked after hours about uh jurassic park mm -hmm. and it opens with um 
so the, the T-Rex and the Dilophosaur are from entirely different periods in in the history of dinosaurs. And the, the we are closer to the T-Rex than the T-Rex is to the Dilophosaur. No. And the the joke the joke in that sketch is that he's like it's like somebody built a human zoo and they took <laughs> you know us and like the flipper evolving fi- fish that first like came out of the ocean and put them together in the park and we're like there play together <laughs> I hate it I hate it so much what <laughs> Yeah, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were around for a long fucking time. They were around, and that's another billions, thing. like I, a I, billion years. I think that's almost. another thing from like school, where it's like you learn everything as like a lump sum with dinosaurs. You learn it's it's just one chapter. In yeah, because the they tell you like, oh yeah, there's the Jurassic era, there's the mm-hmm. Jurassic era, and you're thinking like, oh yeah, so that was like a couple thousand years. Yeah. Like like I bet it was like 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 you think of like the Roman era, the Greek mm-hmm. era. You're like, yeah, that was the Jurassic. Right. And like, no, the Dilophosaurus lived 200 million years ago, and the Tyrannosaurus lived 66 million years ago. That is insane. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's a hundred million years in between when they lived. I, uh, Humans have not been around. No. For that many years? Like, even, we haven't been around for like a million years. <laughs> Oh my god. There was another thing I just had in the, um uh, I don't know. Dinosaurs. Uh, it, uh, the, well, uh, it, it's I, I I just don't get it. <laughs> it it's yeah, it's like like when how how long ago was Mesopotamia? Oh God, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, because that's like the first I can even put you know, that. like city or whatever. Yeah, the the Tigris and the Euphrates. Oh my God, I did just find all of cradle my, of life. I, <laughs> yes, I found all of my mess of, or like my my early history index cards underneath my bed. I could I could go through those real quick. <laughs> Uh, so the first civilization took place around 6,000 years ago. 6,000? That's it? <gasps> oh my. That's that's from, and then like 10,000 BC, that was like both pre-civilization, you know, hunter-gatherer stuff. But yeah, we believe Sumerian civilization first took form in the south southern mesopotamia around 4000 bce or 6000 years ago like i mean we well, got to think like like it's it's 2023 ad right right so <laughs> I, I one of the craziest things me is that like we have things i don't do we have stuff from that long or like do we have mesopotamia stuff from well, that cause, long well cuz like <clears throat> yeah, we kind of do, I think. Um That's wild. I we have I right? believe I believe the first receipt is from Mesopotamia, right? Wow. We have like um we have like a uh it's like one of the oldest uh I th- I believe it's like the oldest written document is a um is like an invoice. Oh. I, uh, like that blows my mind more than us having dinosaur bones. Like dinosaur bones, I mean, they're bones. I mean, they're cool. They're uh, di- okay. Uh, sidebar: skeletons freak me out. But anyway, so with like, like when I went to, like I saw the Rosetta Stone. Like, yeah, that thing's old. That thing is oh, that's a big old rock. And and even then, like that, it can't. It's not that old because it it it, it is the. It's, there were four different like yeah. civilizations that it was the thing for. So yeah, and I when when did when was Pangaea? I mean, that would have been 
was that? billions of years ago, right? Okay. Like, like, like fucking forever ago. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I always was fascinated by the Bering Strait, like how that connected us yeah. in Asia. I Earth, Earth be wild. Like, so let's see. The oldest written thing that we have <laughs> is. There's the Kish tablet, a small limestone tablet uh, from the Uruk period of ancient Mesopotamia containing pictographic instructions exemplifying an early precursor to Sunifum? This is the kind of language. Um, yeah. We get, we, yeah, we, get, we, get, we have some like just written stuff. Uh, I know some of this stuff that we have written from them. Yeah, it, there's some fun stuff with it. Um, the Kushim tablets from the same period feature the old, the oldest person's name that we know, oh. Kushim. <laughs> Shout out. Right, and this is um, yeah, this is the uh, the invoices where it's this guy's um, he recorded transactions of barley for um. Like brewing beer or whatever. Oh my god. That. Ah. Mind blown. How, how do people figure out language? Do you, do you know, do you know how, how people figure out language? <laughs> like how they figure that out. And like the Rosetta Stone and everything. Because like I see stuff. Well, so, I'm like I don't need So the, the, Ros the Rosetta Stone, why it was so important was it had a bunch of ancient languages. Right. That we, we had no idea what they, like we had never like translated them or anything. But then there was one language on there that we did in fact mm -hmm. know. Oh. And so they were able to, basically oh. it was the same thing written like five times. Oh, that's neat. So that gave them enough to understand like all the languages that we had. That makes sense. That, and that's why like Rosetta Stone in general is like, oh, you know, the the nomenclature for like when you find something that helps you understand <laughs> something else, they call it the Rosetta Stone. <laughs> at, at the British Museum, you can buy they have a whole section for Rosetta Stone themed merchandise. You can get socks, you can get um, stress ball, you can get like a, a pencil with it. It's they they really learned how to merchandise that. But um, no, it's cool. I think I have a picture of it. But um, I think for the stuff. most part, the way that we 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 translate other languages and stuff and figure out is that we have texts that we have in multiple languages wow. that they're able like to identify as like like fucking Gilgamesh or whatever you know, the Quran. I assume having mm -hmm. like the Quran in various different um, languages was probably helpful. Mm -hmm. Language. It's always I'll end the episode here in a second. But um the language <laughs> languages have, have always that's another thing that I've never understood entirely like I I mean I took French. I we had to take Spanish in school. But like I don't know. I, I can't wrap my head or I know what fluency is but I can't wrap my my pea brain around like I don't know. I just can't wrap my head around it about language. I get it, but I don't. I don't know. I, I've never even come close to learning another language. No, I got the, up the French too. That's about as far as I got in terms of French. I have basic elementary mm. understanding. So it had Greek on Greek. there. Greek. That'll do Which it. is, yeah, we've, we've been a, you know. People have been studying Greek ever since the Greeks, you know, because yeah. the Ro the Romans kept being like, man, these Greek guys, we should we should know all about these Greek guys. And then the British were like, hey, you know what? Those those Roman guys, they really like the Greek guys. We should like the Greek guys. <laughs> and people, yeah, people just fucking love the. Those Greek bastards. Um, <laughs> Mama mia. But then, yeah, and it also had uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs on there. And that's how we learned a lot of the uh, hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs are cool. If I can learn any language, I want to learn hieroglyphic, hieroglyphs, hieroglyphics. So, I mean, I can't draw either. So, like, I don't know if I'd get very far, but, like, it seems like fun. It seems like a lot of, 
I like pictograms. Yeah. If you can learn any language, this is my last my last question for okay. you. Okay. If you can learn any language fluently, dead or alive, which one would it be? Spanish would help me the most. And I'm not gonna go with that one. I could have I could have easily had learned Spanish already in my lifetime. <laughs> I live in a, I live in an area of the country that has a bunch of Spanish speaking people. My dad speaks fluent Spanish. I could have learned Spanish if I wanted to. <laughs> I didn't want to, so that's not going to be my answer. Um probably French or Italian? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to go visit those countries and it seems like it'd be easier to do if I could uh, speak the language. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. I need to tell you a story that I don't think I like. If I could about. speak France, uh, French fluently, mm-hmm. I feel like they would be less mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think they would, one hundred percent. See, I think once you learn, I mean, once you learn one of the Romance languages, I think it's pretty easy to learn the other ones because they're all mm. derivative. Yeah. Especially English too, like yeah, they're they're very derivative of Latin. So yeah, it's... um, I don't know if I ever told you about this. So, when I went to England last year, my dad had a joke of telling people, "Oh, she's got to learn the language," <laughs> or whatever, and people, haha, so the blah blah. My grandma though, my grandma and my great aunt. I was about to leave. And they were like, did you learn the language yet? And I thought they were joking. I said, oh, <laughs> yeah, it took me a while. Da, da. And they go, is it really that hard? And I was like, oh, God, they're not joking. <laughs> they don't think. Why do they think they speak in England? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't ask them. And then, so I thought that was the end of it. I come back. McKenna, mm-hmm. real quick, I just need to interrupt this because I'm pleased to announce the Seattle Seahawks are going to the playoffs. Oh, congratulations. We congratulations. We did it. If Thank I had you. a confetti cannon, I would shoot it off for you, but I wasn't prepared. Yeah, we're recording this on Sunday, the the, the Packer game and the 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 Lions they've been playing. And if if you've if you've seen me looking down, I've been checking the score because we needed the Lions to win to go to to the playoffs. And we oh, did it. They win? Oh, congratulations. Um I only watched the very like part of the first half they were it was 3-3 when i went upstairs that's all i saw and in 2016 bad game <laughs> that is bad game i before i get back to my story i want to go to wisconsin for one reason and one reason alone and that is to get a cheese hat cheese. and for to eat cheese as well but i want a cheese mm. hat i don't like the packers i don't like aaron Rodgers. yeah fuck that guy i want a cheese hat because I really like cheese, and I'm gonna I'll, yeah, and I'm gonna eat cheese when I go there. There's nothing else really. I mean, you can if you just want the cheese hat. You can get them on like Amazon. No, no, no. I want an authentic. You want to go? I want to go and buy a cheese hat. So fair enough. So I get back home from from England, and my grandma, my aunt, they're asking me. They're like, "Was it really hard to like? Did they understand you essentially when you went there?" And I was like. No, I got it. It was all good, dude. And I thought that was the end of it. I got back in August. Last week, my uncle, um, Roger slash Ralph, he, um, his lady friend, her daughter lives in Denmark and they went there for Christmas and we had to go pick him up from the airport. And my uncle was like saying how like, oh, you know, it's like, I have a new respect for people who like move to a country where they don't speak, like, where you have to learn a new language, da, da, da. And then he turns to me, and he goes, like, for you, for example, like, you had to learn another language <laughs> when you went to England. <laughs> and I, was, oh. once again, thought it was a joke. And I was like, oh, haha, yeah, it was fine. And then, like, he, he was being completely serious. He was going on about it, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, Hannah, I'm worried that your family can't. <laughs> can't put it together that they speak english in england i I don't so i came home and i told my dad i'm like you gotta stop telling people this joke because they're taking it seriously um but yeah that was um so you know shout out to i guess british i guess 
Um, the Brits. The Brits. Causing chaos. Um, the Rams didn't make the playoffs. I I, I no. assume no, no. I didn't think so. Not even close. No, I didn't. I I I had a feeling they didn't. Um, but you know, who do you think? Once again, I'll end up, <laughs> we're at an hour and a half. Um, oh wow! Who do you who do you think is is going to go to the Super Bowl? And or win? Chiefs and Eagles, and the Chiefs win it. Ooh. Where is the Super Bowl this year? I think it's in Arizona. Uh, hot there. Real warm, apparently. That's quite. Got a mace. Not in February, though. Oh, yeah, I suppose it's. Cardinals are there. I heard Trace McSorley sucked, though. So. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't play for them today <laughs> yeah um but you know who did kurt warner played for them not today but at time 13 um yeah yeah in like 2008 Back, you know, that's, <laughs> that's where it ends for me you know once kurt warner stopped playing i was done uh, although i will say i found my third grade journal and I wrote, I guess we had to write about, like, what our dream job was. And I wrote, I went to play in the NFL for the Rams. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> um, I Never had a chance of happening. <laughs> <laughs> I got really into punting one year. But um, my parents didn't let, me, didn't let me play football, so. They wouldn't let you be a punter? Yeah, they, I would, I would practice punting in the, my dad and I, we would practice punting in the backyard. They should have let you be a punter. That would have been cool. <laughs> said I was a cheerleader. They said I was too fragile to play sh- football, and I said, "No, I went. To, I went to play." But wait, wait, how old were you when you when you were trying to be a punter? Eight or nine. Okay, that's pretty young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what could have been? What could have been? Um, Brandon, do you have any final thoughts on the search for Spock? <laughs> Um, yeah, like, like I said, it's just, it's a, it's a totally okay movie that's just jammed between two great movies. And mm-hmm. that's, that's always going to suck. <laughs> if this had been the lead in to like Wrath of Khan, mm-hmm. the people would remember this movie a lot more than they do. Mm-hmm. It'd be a, they remember a lot, but yeah, just being stuck between the two best Star Trek movies ever made. Yeah. It sucks. Very enjoyable. Um, go watch it. I thought it was a fun time. Um, Brandon, where can people find you if they want to find you on the internet? Um, they should. If you if you've got the TikTok, you should go follow Jose Ruckus on TikTok. That's mostly what I'm doing these days. Um, telling jokes on Twitter ain't paying the bills anymore, so we're <laughs> doing it on TikTok now. <laughs> um, you can find me. I mean, I guess technically I po- I did post on Twitter today, um, at Potter Pants Two and Two. Yeah, you, you did your uh, your Jeopardy roundup. If anyone wants to see everything uh, Mac did with Jeopardy, yes, pretty interesting. One hundred eighty five games. Um, yeah, it was a fun time. Stats. It was a good time. Next nice- year, next year we do the fourth annual one. Mm-hmm. I want you on a green screen, right? <laughs> With the motion graphic, like, graphs. And I want you, like, ex- pointing to things. <laughs> and I want, like, you know, graphs showing up. I want, like, like a meteorologist? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I can do that. I can find... I, I have access to a green screen. Um, I can do that. Yeah, I do. Um, there's one of my dad's work that I can probably yeah. get to. We've, we've got a year to come up with everything that oh. you can do for it. Oh, yeah, 100%. It'll be a whole thing. Watch out. Um... But yeah, if you want to see that, it's on my Twitter at Potterpants212. You can follow this show, this very show, also on Twitter at HBO Max, HBO M-A-K-S. It's also uh, YouTube.com slash at HBO Max, HBO M-A-K-S, or anywhere where you find podcasts, HBO M-A-K-S. Um, oh my god. Brandon, I, audiobooks... <laughs> Star Trek has them. 
And there's a lot of other do. audiobooks. Yeah, we got to start remembering to do an ad plug in the middle of the episode. Yeah, that would be, um, I should put a sticky note somewhere. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, we have a we have a creator code on Audible. If mm-hmm. you're into audiobooks, you want to try some audiobooks out. It's New Year. You're trying to read some books, New Year's resolutions, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you can sign up for a free trial of Audible. Uh, audibletrial.com slash HBO Max, M-A-K-S. That's audibletrial.com slash HBO M-A-K-S. Um, and yeah, you don't, you can sign up for the free month. If you like it, you can keep it. I have an Audible subscription. I think it's pretty neat. Um, if you don't like it, that's cool. You still get an audiobook. You get you get a free audiobook that you get to keep, regardless if you stay signed up for or not. Um, what are you reading yeah. or listening to? Current currently, I am I'm reading another Terry Pratchett novel right now. Ooh. I am reading um, the second in the Death series. I'm reading Reaper Man. Ooh, that's a cool pretty name. fun book i enjoy that name i almost bought mort last week at the bookstore mort mort i read that one last year good good book good book you would like it oh shoot i should have picked it up then i yeah. got and you can also you can pick up the audiobook for mort, i can pick up the which audiobook. Is fantastic i can use our code audibletrial.com slash hbo m-a-k-s all lowercase it's, it's case sensitive people <laughs> be careful mm. um support us thank you um oh i emailed the clapper company by the way (laughs) (laughs) they haven't gotten back to me yet but uh shame i know so they also do chia pets i didn't realize it was clapper and chia pets that company company. both yeah which is probably why their commercials are very similar but not um the log or the of gloves so i don't know why those are the same but anyway Mm. um subscribe like Comment, Brandon. What should people comment this week? Comment if you think that there are aliens. Ooh. Do you think? Do you think that we've already contacted aliens? Do you think that aliens don't exist? Let us know your opinions on aliens in the comments. Yes, alien opinions. We want them. We need them. Thank you. Um, and with that, hit the bell too, please. Thank you. And review. Um, with that. Um, the live long and prosper. We're still we're still in Star Trek month. 